Howdy all, welcome to this Report Right Little Quickie episode. In this episode we'll be looking at data visualisation. So today's Quickie will be sticking to the normal format, we'll be looking at why data visualisation is important, then we'll be looking at two different quality examples, followed by some extra resources to help you visualise your data. So why is data visualisation important? Often the results section is not worth much weighting in a report, it can be worth less than 10% for example. That is not to say the results are not significant, it's more to say keep these short and sweet. One way you can successfully do this is through data visualisation. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. However, there's more than meets the eye regarding data visualisation, pun intended. There are more effective ways to show data rather than pages upon pages of bar charts or God forbid 3D bar charts. So knowing what chart to use with your data can help tremendously when weaving your story throughout your report. Data visualisation can also be the standout piece of work you produce. Here is a famous visualisation, firstly alone and then secondly as a scarf. Now this doesn't have any access titles or keys to tell you what the data categories is, but I bet you guess what this graph is trying to say. This is data visualisation of the average global temperature over time, thus showing the effects of climate change. Now I don't expect such a an effective data visualisation that green MEPs will be wearing them in the EU Parliament. But think about this as a pinnacle of what fantastic data visualisation can do. Tell you the story without any words and no confusion. Now let's come crashing down to reality to look at one of my finer moments in my academic career. This data visualisation took me four hours and look at it, it's shit. This type of graph is a sand key diagram meant to show you the data flow from one point to another. The data I'm using from a Likert scale, a survey methodology commonly seen, you've probably came across it. It's where respondents can choose from strongly disagree to strongly agree. From this spaghetti monster we can see that I've chosen an inappropriate visualisation method from the data. With some more tweaking of the software I used, perhaps I could have got a more salvageable job. But for a noob like me, that was out of the question. The second aspect is an important one. Where are the required elements? The title, the axis, the legend. For example, what do the colours mean? I'll let you in a secret, they don't mean anything, but I couldn't find the setting to turn them off. Additionally, I've not included any numbers in the graph, so therefore you can't tell what how big the actual proportions are. In any visualisation, these mainstays of visualisation, such as your axis titles, your titles of the overall chart, the legend, the key, the caption, these are all necessary, make sure you use them. Final point here, reminder that these are not their visualisations and they're meant to show you the data, but you can tell a story. Finally, the last point here is a reminder that this isn't raw data, it's not a dump of data. You're writing a story with your visualisations. From this diagram, there is no story. Perhaps if I highlighted one group going from all the different decisions they made, then I could tell the story. But from this mess, nothing is clear. This isn't a good vi visualisation and will leave the reader with more questions than answers, as it did. Now, let's look at another piece of my handiwork. This graph didn't take me four hours to make. It took me about 10 minutes using Excel. This type of graph is 100% stacked bar chart. This means it shows the percentages of response for each question. It's using the same data from the previous example, but it's still not perfect. There's still room for improvement. So let's look into it. Firstly, the title needs some work. Similar to the report's title, the use of correct and accurate language is needed. So perhaps the refinement to provide some further detail would have helped. Break down the responses to the system usability scale. Maybe percentage breakdown responses. The second point is a schoolboy error. I didn't even notice it until I submitted. I'd used blue for both strongly agree and strongly disagree. How is someone to tell the difference? You might want to explore accessibility, perhaps look at what colours help distinguish for colourblind people for example. There's all these things can take your diagram to the next level. On the third point we can see the increments of or on the x-axis are done 10%. Could this be better scaled to some of the data points we see in the graph? 
some of which are less than 5%, so maybe 5% increments might be more appropriate. Just helps you, but maybe because the picture was quite small, you might get away with just 10%. The last point here is I'm recommending a different data visualization method. I'm diverging stacked bar chart. You might not have seen this diverging stacked bar chart before, but it's similar to the one here. But rather than it be from 0 to 100, it's centre aligned. So therefore the centre shows the middle of the responses. And then it grows towards the extremes. This method, this diverging method, better shows the variation and flow between questions rather than measuring the size of each section. Overall, this effort isn't as poor as the previous, but it's not that great either. Now here's a hefty list of further reading resources. Some of these are inspirational for some good work that you can look at, such as the New York Times Graphics Department, which is spectacular. Additionally, some examples of poor work to hopefully avoid replicating, such as junk charts. Additionally, some of the guides and catalogues here will hopefully give you a spark to motivate you to go further with your data. Have a good look around these resources, and I bet you'll enjoy it. So wrapping up this episode, we focused on data visualisation. We've spoken about why data visualisation should be central to your results section. We've seen some of my poor and less poor handiwork and discussed certain aspects of each at length. Finally, I recommended many additional resources which you should go away and read to hopefully further develop your skills. That's all from me, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode and good luck.